and I And it over you and I And I said that's fine But you're the only one who knows I lied You and I And it over you and I And I said that's fine But you're the only one who knows I lied Hi guys, in this video we're going to cover how to play You and I by Ed Sheeran. Um, I just played that song for you, just the chorus of it, in two slightly different ways. Uh, the first way is in line with my beginner's course, so if you've come from my absolute beginner's first video, uh, you'll have learnt the chords E major and A major, and we can play the whole of this song just with those two chords uh, along to the record, and it sounds great. If you've come to this video, kind of, you've played bar chords before and you're aware of, you know, lots of other chords, then you may want to go for the slightly trickier version, uh, which does use uh, a bar chord, which is a C sharp minor. Um, if you've covered bar chords before, then you can skip along to the video in the description at the bottom. That will move you along to that section of the video where I'll cover the kind of the full proper way um, in full. At the moment, I'm going to be covering just the absolute beginner's way, and this can be a great way to start off just playing along to the record. Um, if you've come from my first beginner's video, you'll understand a little bit about bars and beats. In this song, we have two bars of E major, so one, two, three, and again, two, three, and then we have one bar of A major, and then finally your E major. And that chord sequence repeats for the chorus and every verse. Um, with your strumming pattern, I always recommend this song for all my absolute beginner students. I've taught it many times and this covers the, the style of strumming where you're going to strum on a certain word. Because if you want to start out playing absolute beginner's guitar, you may wish to sing along to what you're playing. And especially if it's kind of an acoustic-y singer-songwriter song, it can be lots of fun. It, it can be really, really fun to play along to the record, but also to sing along on your own as well. And if you're counting, that can be really tricky to do. If you're counting every beat and you've got to think of the words at the same time, it, it's probably not going to happen. It's probably going to be really tricky for you. So what I'd like you to do here is strum on a certain word. And I kind of call this the songbook style, and if you search for chord sequences online, this may be how it gets laid out, so it kind of uh, preps you for that. Um, so when, for each bar, we're going to play strum and strum. And this goes along in line with the lyrics, for example, you and I. Um, if you click on the other links below, you will see a link to my website where I've got all the chord sheets uh, printed out for this song for this version and the harder version later on if you want to have a go at that. But if you click to that so that you can see what I'm uh, referring to here, your first bar of E is uh, written as we've, we've previously covered it, but you've got two uh, horizontal lines and they indicate when you're going to strum. And you're going to strum on U and then on I. And that same kind of pulse, that same rhythm, is going to happen on every bar and it will strum on kind of the first and last word um, of each sentence. So just as an example one more time, you and I ended over you and I. So every time you play a bar you're going to go strum and strum rather than having to count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four because that can be detrimental to you playing and singing this along and for it sounding really good and also being enjoyable. Um, so we've got the two bars of E, then the one bar of A, just to start off with. We'll play along just, for, uh, just on the first count of one. So at the start of each bar, E, E, A, E. So it can be a new chord sequence to get used to this one. So in two, three, four, E, two, Three and again, E two three. Then an A, A two three. Finish on E one two three four. Okay, we're just going to go for that one more time, but let's see if we can do it twice on the trot. Okay, so this is going to be for your whole chorus. 
from the top again, from your E, two, three, four. E, two, three, four. E again, two, three. Then an A, A, two, three. Back to E. One, two, three, four, and stop. If you're still finding that trickier, then I recommend you just focus on the changes between E and A to start off with. And maybe just try the next bit just with the rhythm and stay on the E chord. There's a possibility that this might be the second song or the second thing that you've ever played on guitar. So chill out, don't worry about it, you'll get it. Give it a couple of days of this E and A method that I go through with you um, in great detail in that first video. Come back to this and I'm sure you'll get it. If you've got it, if you're feeling okay, feeling confident, we're going to go for this new strumming pattern, which is just copying what he's saying in the words, strumming, strum and strum, for example, you and I. And we're going to keep that going for just once, just one round of the chord sequence that I've given for you, and then we'll, uh, we'll put it into the rest of the song. Okay, so we're going to play strum and strum. In... One, two, three, four. Strum and strum. E again. Strum and strum. Then to A. Strum and strum. Back to E. Strum and strum. One more time. In one, two, three, four. You and I. And it over you and I. Then to A. And I said that's fine. But you're the only one who knows I lied. Okay, and that is your chorus. Your challenge is to try and keep that going through the verses as well. Because throughout the verses, I'm not going to try and sing them because I'm no rapper. Uh, Ed Sheeran speaks awful quickly and these, he kind of goes into a rap style. And you've just got to keep that same pattern going all the way through the verses. Same way, thing to A, and then back to E. Um, so that will work for the very introduction of the, core, of, of the uh, verse as soon as it starts. Then there's another section. There's another section, and that's called a bridge. A bridge always happens between um, a verse and a chorus. If you're watching this in America, usually in America, a bridge is called a pre-chorus, and your bridge is kind of your middle eight. That's just a, another way of putting it. But just for the argument's sake, because I'm in England, I'm doing this in England, I'm going to call it a bridge, which bridges between the verse and the chorus, and it kind of acts like a build-up. For this bridge, we're just going to stay on an A chord and do that same rhythm. And it's going to go strum and strum, strum and strum. And that's going to be for your section four. So I'm not close to you anymore if it's over strong and there's no constant will work it out. Okay, if the only two chords you know are E and A, that will sound absolutely fine to the record. But what I want you to do is just try and make sure you can get at least that chorus, maybe singing and strumming at the same time, and that will sound absolutely great. And then playing it along to the record and playing it at the same time as he does and that would be great as well. To be able to play it along to the record you will need something called a capo. Now this is the capo that I use and I um, recommend for my students because these are dirt cheap you can get these for as little as £1.50 or £2 um, depending on kind of shipping fees and stuff. I will send you a link to this in, uh, in the description in the bottom and try and keep it updated sometimes places run out of stock and things like that. But these are kind of vital for the, all the rest of the songs in this series, or for most of them anyway. If you just want to play and sing along to these songs, you don't need a capo. There's no need. It will sound absolutely fine on its own. I really recommend that you play along to the record. If you play along to the record, it gives you the feeling of joining in. You will likely play for longer, because most songs last about three and a half minutes. And it will give you the feeling of playing to something else. You're playing to something external. You're not deciding when you're going to play it, you're joining in. And that's the same feeling you'll get when you play with other people in a small group 
or when you play with a singer, or when you even start your own band, if you can kind of imagine that far along the road. A capo allows you to play these songs along to the record, and that's really great. You can get other types of capo, these sort of uh, screw-on ones as well. These are really cool. Um, personally, just for the ease of putting them on, because these can be a little fiddly, and they take a little while. They still sound pretty good, but they just they do take a little bit to kind of screw on, and then I personally, with this trigger type capo, you squeeze there and there, it opens it up, and the flat part, you see you've got a more curvy part here, the flat part goes bang in the middle of the second fret area. So technically, as I say, the frets are the metal strips going downwards on your guitar, but the space in between those are what we'd call second fret. And that's where we want to put it. You should have a dot at third fret on your guitar. Some guitars don't, but most do. And then we'd make your E major chord proportionate to this capo. Now that does make it sound different. It essentially changes the key. And this no longer kind of sounds like an E major chord. It sounds like a different chord. It sounds like an F sharp. But in guitarist language, all you ever need to know is where to put your capo, which I will tell you, or a songbook will tell you, and then which open chords to play. Um, makes it a song that we can go for, and that's really great. Okay, so let's just have one quick jam along, just to the chorus. We're going to do this twice. Um, e, E, A, E is your repeating chord sequence, strumming along to me in a one, two, three, four. You and I ended over you and I And I said that's fine But you're the only one who knows I lied You and I ended over you and I And I said that's fine But you're the only one who knows I lied And that's how to play the easy beginner's version of Ed Sheeran, You and I. If you like that video, please subscribe and like my videos so that I will make you more of these easy, free beginners videos. Okay, now we're going to crack on with the uh, slightly harder version to, to play this song, Ed Sheeran, You and I. We're going to go for um, a bar of E and another. And then we need to bar with your first finger at fourth fret. And this is going to make an A minor shape bar chord. So if you're unfamiliar with the kind of shapes idea of me referring to this as a A minor shape, the idea is we're using your first finger as a capo. The advantage of that is we can move it so we're not limited to just having your capo at say second or fourth fret. In real reality you could do this entire song without a capo but that would put a lot of pressure on your first finger and we do try and avoid that certainly on acoustic guitar if we want this kind of lustrum idea. So we're going to put your capo, uh, your first finger flat at fourth fret, um, proportionate to the capo at seconds. So this would kind of be six, but I'm going to call it four. So uh, this would be in the space between two dots. And then we make an A minor shape with your weaker three fingers. If you're not used to doing that, what I recommend is you just try and make an A minor shape in the open position, but replace your first finger with your middle finger, your third finger, and your little one there. Um, this just kind of strengthens and uh, improves coordination of your three weaker fingers that don't get used too often. But we got that just for one strum, and then we're straight back to A major in that third bar, and then we're, we're back to the E. So just to run you through that chord sequence from the top, two, three, four, E and E, E again, fourth fret bar chord, straight down to A and E and E. If that's something that you're not yet able to do, the easy beginner's version is absolutely fine. It sounds great along to the record. If you want to challenge yourself even more than that, you can try this whole song without a capo and kind of do the math on it a little bit. So we'd start off with kind of an F shape, F sharp, sorry, F sharp bar chord at second fret, 
and that would be where your E chord was before. So E and strum, strum and strum. Slide it to six frets, back down to A and strum and strum. And there, you're all your different options to be able to play these songs that aren't in the open position. Um, you can tell that with this bar chord, it, it doesn't always ring out as, as well. And that's why, one reason why I really recommend using a capo for this song and other songs, even if, you know, it's, you, this is something that you're able to do. If you can play along to the record, that's a more important skill, and to really help you do that, I recommend the capo. Um, if you're struggling with that middle version, just try this song um, with the open, with the capo, and just doing the two open chords, E and A, and then move on, learn, learn more songs with basic easy chords. Um, but there's the, the, all the different versions for you. I hope that helped. Um, please check out my other videos in this series. And subscribe if you dig what I do.